Well, uh, there, there are a couple things. I have a whole chapter on, um, you know, kind of investment suggestions, portfolio allocations and all that. Uh, but uh, the, the main thing to do is a couple of things. They're almost constants, not quite, because it's not a set and forget it type portfolio, but you definitely, you definitely want 10% gold and whether it's, you know, physical bullion or, you know, some kind of fund. I, I, I recommend physical bullion, but, um, you know, if you have a, an ETF or something, at least you get price exposure, uh, gold mining shares, and you can look at silver miners and all that. But I also recommend um, a big slug of cash, maybe 30% cash. Um, I recommend lightening up on equities. I think equities have a lot further to fall. There's been a spectacular rally from March 23rd to September 2nd. We had one of the we had the, the shortest bear market and the fastest return to a bull market in history, but uh, it doesn't mean this is over. That was sort of you know I, I call the S and P 500. I call it the S and P six because it's really only six companies that are dragging along the other 494 because it's a it's a cap weighted index. So when you look at Amazon, Apple, uh, Microsoft, Netflix, um, uh, Facebook, and uh, Google or you know Alphabet, uh, those six stocks are almost 40 percent of the weight of the index. So they go up, the index goes up. A lot of people don't pick stocks anymore, they just buy index funds. So their index funds go up. So it's all sort of going up together, it's all good. But there are two problems with that. Number one, how sustainable is that? And by the way, this, the six companies I mentioned, they're the least affected by the pandemic. Meanwhile, so, so my point is that the, the stock market is completely detached from the economy. It used to be the stock market was kind of a proxy for the economy, not exactly, but to some extent. That's not true anymore. Those six stocks the, the, and, and others like it, uh, they're, you know, some of the tech, tech names, uh, they, uh, they're just in a world of their own. The economy is in very bad shape and we'll remember, so. And I'm happy you brought that up, Jim, because, you know, you're absolutely right. The stock market is painting one picture, but the economy is telling us something different. Um, so what is the real truth here? And that leads me to my other point about the debate of inflation versus deflation. And I know you're one yeah. of the few experts out there saying, actually, you know, the Fed wants an inflationary environment, but they might not get it. Right. Well, I've said that for a long time, and they haven't been able to get it for a long time. It's just, it's just literally in the past few weeks that the Fed has come out more or less admitted this uh, in, in a couple of respects. But f so, first of all, uh, the idea that you know money printing causes inflation is just not true. Now, everyone believes it's true. The monetarists, you know, the Milton Friedman followers, the Austrian economists. Um, even the neo Keynesians say, yeah, if you print a lot of money, you get inflation. It's not true. And, and you know, just for empirical evidence, I don't just say things like this without backing them up. Between 2008 um, and 2015, um, uh, you know, when they ended, uh, sorry, 2014, when they ended QE3 at the time, the Fed expanded its balance sheet by almost $3 trillion. And we never had inflation. We never had serious inflation. You, get, you know, one, one and a half percent, but we never had serious inflation. The whole time the Fed had a target. This is, a, a, you know, 11 years if you want to go all the way to the end of the expansion in 2019, you know, technically uh, February uh, 2020, 11 years. Uh, and the Fed never hit their target of 2%. A couple months, yeah, but not on, not on a sustained basis and certainly nothing above that. So it, I like to say it's a sad day when the Fed wants inflation and can't get it. And they do want it. So now they've come up with a new monetary policy. They've sort of, as I say, given up on the, on the money printing thing. And they say, we're just going to let the economy run hot. We're not going to worry about, um, you know, money supply as much. Uh, we're just going to, you know, basically let, let unemployment uh, drop, hopefully, and let inflation go. And if it goes above 2%, uh, we're going to let it stay there for a while. So the, so the below 2% and the above 2% kind of average out to 2%. That's new. Here's the problem. You can say it. You can take a vote and make that your policy. It doesn't mean you can make it happen. They failed for 12 years or 11 years. Why do we think they're going to succeed now? The greatest danger in the macro economy today is deflation because of declining labor force participation, declining productivity, and most of all, velocity. Velocity is the turnover of money. It, it doesn't matter what the money supply is. If it's not turning over, if there's not lending and spending, if people aren't chasing the goods, then you're not going to get the inflation. And so, but velocity, is a, as I just described it, is a psychological phenomenon. It, how do you feel? Do you feel prosperous? Do you feel confident? Do you want to go out and 
buy uh, you know, dinners on May or drinks on May or whatever, uh, buy a new car set, or do you feel cautious? Do you feel concerned? You saw your neighbor lose her job. You're worried about losing your job, et cetera. So you save more. Well, the evidence is people are saving more. We're in a liquidity trap. Saving was sort of kind of working its way up from 5% to 8%. Uh, in uh, April, it was 33%. In May, it was still 25%. In June, it was 17%. So savings can be a good thing, but in, in the long run, if you have productive investments, and that's a big question, but in the short run, the savings come out of consumption. If I make money, I'm either going to save it or spend it. Well, if I save more, I'm spending less. So all the signs are point to deflation. The Fed can say they want inflation and they can print all the money they want. It doesn't mean they're going to get it. So despite the zero rate environment, Jim, you're saying that people are still saving. They're, well, for, they, that is the evidence. They're, they're not just still saving. You're right about that, Danielle. They're saving more than ever. These are like Chinese levels of savings rates. Now, it makes sense, right? If you lost your job, um, you're going to, hey, I got to pay the rent. I got to pay the mortgage or the kids' tuition or health care. So I'm going to save more. I'm, I'm going to cut out, you know, uh, dinners and vacations and uh, club memberships and discretionary items. If you didn't lose your job, but your neighbor did. You might be where, what if, how do I know I'm not next? You know, look at the companies that have gone bankrupt. You know, uh, Pier One, Neiman Marcus, JCPenney, Brooks Brothers, Gold's Gym. I mean, the list goes on and on. So, so let me ask you this, Jim. The last time we spoke was in April. Um, is it safe to say you're more worried today than you were then, or even say a year ago? Uh, well, no, a year ago, I was saying that the economy was weak. I mean, my, my last book, uh, Aftermath, came out in uh, July 2019. So it's just a little over a year old. It's not like it wrote it five years ago. That book's a little over a year old. Go look at page uh, 288 to 291. I talked about pandemic. I said 100% chance uh, it or I had two other scenarios. So 100% chance one of them happens in the next three years and pandemic was on the list. So, uh, and I also talked about civil unrest and uh, armed militias in the streets, which we're seeing every night. So everything that's happening now I forecast in my book, Aftermath, which came out in July 2019. You can just go look it up. So my new book, uh, The New Great Depression, is going to take the story forward and tell you what's going to happen in the next couple of years. But the deflation story is not new, Danielle. It's, it's been persistent uh, and it's getting worse. The Fed does, I, I, I could tell you how to cause inflation in 15 minutes, but unfortunately the Fed kind of uh, forgot how to do it. <laughs> 